Hello, and welcome to the Locate Online Quick Start Guide. This guide is designed to show you screen navigation and how to sample images to build color databases that can be saved for future use. Once you save those color databases, we will show you how to set up a scan or image analysis using the power of Locate to detect color ranges that you specify. We will also show you some techniques to reduce the number of false positives in a scan. Since this is a quick start, we will only touch on the basics of the software. We will also discuss some of the other modules that are available since they are a part of the screen navigation, but those will be saved for future more advanced training sessions. First, let me introduce myself. My name is Gene Robinson, and I have been called the grandfather of SAR drones. I guess the name fits because I am gray and I have grandkids, so I'll accept it. I have been utilizing drones for SAR for the past 15 years and developed best practices and techniques through trial and error and being in the field for days on end to find out what works. In that time, I have personally conducted searches utilizing drone collected imagery that has brought home 18 lost souls to their families. We did this by manually viewing each and every picture we collected using the standard issue Mark 1 eyeball which is a very time-consuming task, especially when minutes matter. In my past life in information technology as a programmer analyst, I learned that computers could process massive amounts of data in a short period of time. When I began collecting digital images with a drone, I always knew in my heart that there was a way to have a computer help with the analysis of all that data. I have been looking for the solution that Locate has become for 10 long years and very happy to be assisting the team in the continued development of the software and its capabilities. With that said, anyone who has conducted just a few searches will verify that there are many variables to consider, and we must rely on many tools to assist us in that search. Locate is just that, another tool, although a very powerful tool, to be included in our toolkit. It is not the be-all, end-all, and it certainly does have limitations, but when used properly, can help the searcher using digital imagery make better decisions on resource allocation in the field. Before we get started and jump into the software, what I'd like to talk about just for a little bit is color and how we perceive color and how color is detected. As you can see here on the screen, the human eye can detect between 10 and 12 million colors, which is pretty good. However, a JPEG image can have up to 16.8 million different colors. So to me, it seems like we're missing out on something that uh, we could possibly be utilizing. And that's where Locate comes in, because Locate doesn't have those misgivings or shortcomings. That the very small number of 4 to 5 million that we can't detect is easily detectable by a computer and by Locate. And we'll talk about how that occurs and how that happens in the Locate software. In the old days, we would, as I said earlier, we would view each one of the images manually. And there is a little bit of an issue there with some people having color blindness. I happen to be one of those people. I happen to be red, green, yellow color blind. And how did I find this out? Well, when I went into the military, I took what's called the Ishihara test. And in these bubbles, you should clearly see two numbers. If you don't see both numbers in these bubbles, then you may have some sort of color deficiency. It is very common in men, uh, up to 10, 12, 15 percent of men can have some form of color blindness. And it is very rare in women, surprisingly enough. But you, if you do not see numbers in these bubbles, you may want to have an optometrist give you a test. It's a very simple test. It's painless. They don't poke you with anything. All you have to do is look at a book and tell them what number you see, and it'll tell them whether you are red colorblind or green-blue colorblind or any combination thereof. So I'd highly recommend, if you don't know, and uh, you can go online and look at the Ishihara tests that are available online, and if you start missing a few of them, you might want to be tested.
So on to the software finally. We're going to start up here at the upper left hand corner on the top menu bar. This is the typical top menu bar that you see in just about any Windows application. Each one of these items produces a pull down just like this one. This is the mission pull down which allows you to either start a new mission where you can enter all new information, you can open a saved mission, or you can save the mission that you're on for future use. If you need to save that one as a different, maybe an incremental, you can save as and call it a different name. View actually changes the view of the screen itself. If you'll notice that I can press this wrap automation view button and you'll notice that this part of the screen opens up and I'll turn it off again see it makes it go away and we're not going to talk too much about it this is those one of those things that we're not going to talk too much about but this just allows you to change the view between your basic operation and your more advanced operations so we're going to turn those off for this particular demo so that we don't see those like so. Turn it on and off for you a couple times so you can see it. Plugins. The plugins are some very exciting tools that you would be interested in. We'll talk about these right here. Oh, by the way, that's my new toy. See that right there? I can make that circle go off like that. I'll do use that to highlight where I am. The Locate Conversion plugin allows you to take georeference data and convert it to just about any other type of georeference data. And we're going to talk about these very quickly because these are the advanced sort of trainings that we'll talk about. So if you have a KML file, you need to convert it to a KMV or a KMZ or a CSV or something like that. You could use this utility for it. The extraction plugin is a pretty cool tool because as you go and collect all your data, if you're using a mapping style technique to collect your data, you can use this extraction tool to pull all of the GPS information out as a KML, KMZ, or GeoJSON. There are several uh, uh, file formats that you can use and open them up in Google Earth so you can see where you're actually flying or where you've actually flown. Locate Focus is allows you to essentially identify an area that you have imaged and only process the images that are in that area. For example, you could draw a circle around a lake and it would only process the images that were taken over that lake. Locate Rapid Scan allows you to divide and conquer, basically. You can split up the number of images that you've taken because when you're doing a mission, like a search mission, and you're doing it properly with mapping, your victim or whoever you're searching for could be into as many as six of the images. So there's no need to scan all six of those images. So you can tell RapidScan extract every fourth image for me so that I can scan those with locate. What that does is reduces the time that you have to scan the images or if you had the facility and you had extra computers you could take those images that have been segregated out and send them over to another computer and have them scanned and locate. So it just reduces the amount of time that you have to go through scanning images. Locate Video Slicer is another one of the really exciting tools that you'll see. Now there are some people who absolutely swear by video. We don't recommend using video at all for a search because a 4K video that's typical from uh, your drones these days are very good. They're very clear. However, if you look at it in terms of resolution, a 4K video is only 8 megapixels. When those cameras will actually take a 20 megapixel image. So why would you want to give up? over 60 percent of your resolution just to run a video. Well, you don't. You don't want to do that. However, if that's the only thing you have, you can use the Locate Video Slicer to pull out images so that you can scan them and locate. 
So you could tell me, you could tell the, the locate video slicer to go out and pull me a frame out of that video every second. So every second it would pull one image out, save it as a JPEG. It would be a lower resolution JPEG, but you could still scan it with the locate video slicer. Help, obviously, is help where you can register your software, what other latest additions are to the software, and help on the software itself is pressed by F1. However, you will need an internet connection to do so. So let's move on to the screen and we'll start talking about the screen items that we have available to us. And I'm going to do a little house clean in here, clean that up from another previous search that we did. You can name this anything you want. You can give it a, a free form name as, as long as you need. It could be a case number. It could be a, a, the person's name, whatever you need to, to name it to identify it for you. And that's what it will be saved as when you use the mission function up here. The results folder is where locate will put all of the results, all of the targets that it finds, any of the reports that need to be sent will be in there. So you can make that on your desktop. You can keep it on your local drive. You can do whatever you need to do to make it easy for you to find. Mission images. Where are you going to put the, the mission images? It could be a thousand images that you want scanned. We recommend very strongly that you put these thousand images that you've taken on your local C drive. That hard drive has the quickest access and it allows Locate to get through them quicker. So it can be anywhere. It can be an external drive. It can be a thumb drive, anything else. And it will run them, no problem. But to get your best efficiency, use your local hard drive. Search method, at this point, we only have the color range. There are other color techniques, that, color detection techniques that we are developing that will come up, and these will be populated here in this pull-down menu. CPU threads, Locate will use, if you have a multi-threading personal computer, whether it's a laptop or a desktop, it will use as many threads as you allow it to. We recommend that you just take the default as three, and it will run quite happily on just about any laptop, any desktop that you have, standard configuration, it will happily run on. There are no special requirements for Locate to run on either a Windows or a Mac computer. The Spectrum database right here, this is where you will put in your color database files to begin your scans with. We'll talk about those a little bit more as we build them, but for now all you need to know is this is where they will reside and you will see them when you add them over here by either creating one on your own or using the methods that we're going to show you shortly to build them. Moving down the screen, minimum pixels per cluster. Well, Locate is so powerful, it will go down to the pixel level. So if you have a 20 megapixel image that's 20 million pixels, it will look at each and every single pixel. This is really powerful. Now, there's a lot of pixels there and it goes pretty fast. Locate will scan about 220 megapixel images a second maybe a little bit more than a second if you've got a slower machine, but it's still pretty fast. The max pixels per circle is a tool that helps you eliminate some false positives. For example, if we were looking for a small child's t-shirt, say it was blue, and there were some cars or some blue tarpaulins or something like that out there that were blue as well, but they are very large obviously. And if Locate found something that had 500 or more pixels per circle, it would ignore them. So it wouldn't put a circle around them. It wouldn't identify them as a target. It wouldn't do anything of the sort. They would just ignore them because otherwise there would just be too many false positives in there. This number is completely controllable by the user. So depending upon your environment, you can set that up or down. Now the cluster alarm is in here because if you're not paying attention and you're not watching the process, 
and you are hitting a lot of those, then you might want to rethink the color scan that you're using. You may want to tighten up the color a little bit. So this one is matched to this one, but again, you can change it to any color you want. And if you start hitting that, if Locate starts seeing that number of pixels together, it'll start flashing red and yellow and kind of alert you and say, hey, you know, you need to start all over again. The automation and the sweep buttons, again, these are advanced things that uh, we talked about earlier. We're going to do those later in a more advanced session, so we're just going to leave those alone. The boundary color is what Locate will use as a color to mark the targets. Locate very conveniently circles the target for you so you can see exactly where it is on the picture and it will also color the pixels that match your scan with that same color. You can set this to whatever you like depending upon the environment that you're in. If you, if you select or click on that it brings up this color chart. You can either select from that or you can even do a custom color by clicking anywhere in there clicking on OK and it will save it to that color. Process is running. These are all informational items. All these next four are information to give you as it's running. It will show you how many processes are running that you load up in the advanced features. The current attempt, it will tell you if you do a cycle through many different color ranges, it'll tell you what attempt it's on. Images processed. In this one, say for example, and in this example that we're going to be running for you, it'll say 149 images are being processed. It'll say 4 of 149 or 5 or 6 or 7. It'll run an incremental count as it goes through there. Images saved. Images saved is one that is very important to us because this number will remain zero until Locate actually finds something in the images that matches your color database. Then that number will click to one and it'll click to two or three depending upon how many you have. Now the really really good thing about Locate is, is that as soon as it clicks one you can start viewing the images and it does not stop the scan. It will continue merrily along in the background producing targets and circling them for you as they find them while you are viewing the images and that viewer just happens to be right here. I use my little tool again here. Now this is a very powerful tool and it is integral to what we will use to build our first color database. I don't think I need to explain the start button because that's what makes it go. When you get loaded up and ready to go, you'll hit the start and that's what begins the process in Locate. So let's go to the viewer and let's begin a color sample. So let's click viewer and that opens up this very powerful viewing utility that we can manipulate our images with but for this particular exercise we're going to show you how to use the viewer to create a color database. We can go up here to file just like we would any other Windows product when you click on file you can either open image you can do a few things with it again there's some more powerful tools that you can utilize and, and uh, locate that we'll talk about in more advanced training sessions, but we can open an image and it'll ask you, okay, where do you want to open and what image do you want to open? So you can select anything. You, We'll go ahead and select this search mission and we want to take a sample of what the color is that we want to look for. So in this particular case, this is a search and rescue mission and the individual that we're looking for happened to be wearing a hat that looked just like that. So we're going to utilize that picture to begin our color database building. From here we can use our mouse wheel and use our mouse wheel to zoom in very, very, very closely into that hat. As you can see, wherever I put my mouse wheel, that's where it goes, or my mouse cursor, that's where it goes. And we can get right down to the pixel level. If you'll notice over here on the left, 
right here. As we roll over the pixels, the value changes. Those are the three numbers that our color is expressed in. RGB, or red, green, blue values, to a computer are only numbers. And in this particular case, the blue square that I'm on, which is a lighter blue than, say, this one, which is a darker blue, but if you look at this one, over on the left-hand side, it tells you that it's 55 red, 105 green, and 226 blue. So the very top value any color can be is 255. So obviously this one is a very blue, deep blue color. With this one showing more of the other colors in it to darken it up. So that's the way a computer looks at colors with using those numbers. We're going to tell Locate to use those three numbers to go look for anything in our group pictures that will match that. I'd like to point out that over here we have a color select mode. In this color select mode we are in single pixel. So we can select a single pixel just like this by right clicking and it puts it into this color selection box down here so you'll know what you selected. Just below that you have the clear button, which obviously will clear the box for you. You can go back out and right click again to get the color that you want. And then the one below that is create range. So we will press create range and it will bring up a file dialog box. And we're going to call this one dark blue hat. You can call it anything you want, but we think you should make it descriptive so you'll be able to see it as you use and build more databases. As you can see, I've built several Blue Hat databases, Backpack, uh, Bright Brass, Red, Dark Red, Light Red, Medium Red, Yellow. Those are things that I have found that worked and that I've built that worked. So this was where you will store all your database files that contain your colors. So we'll call this one dark blue hat and we'll save it. And that brings up our color database editor. And if you'll notice my name is up here at the top. It is set for single color and I have my single color identified right here in two places actually. You have 3686207 and right there is the single pixel value that we're looking for. Now we can stop right there and go ahead and try to run our search. If we use a single pixel, what are our odds of finding that color in our 20 megapixel image? Well, it's going to be 1 in 16.8 million. Well, we want to open it up a little bit, so we're going to, what we're going to do is we're going to convert it to a range. So this number the spectrum number is the one that is most important to us because that range will be created using that number. This will be our midline. 36, 86, and 207 will be our midline range. If we say convert to range utilizing this number here, which is changeable by us, we can change it to anything we want. We can change it to 20. We can change it to anything we want, but it will reduce this number by 36 and increase this number by 36 to give us our range. Same way with this one. It'll reduce the 86 to 76 and it'll increase it to 96 as soon as we hit convert to range, which I'm going to do now. So, as promised, there is our range and you see it is incremented by 10 above and below our midline. Over here to the right, if you'll notice, you've got two thumbnails that show you what your color range is going to be. So we're going to stop right there, and this is what we're going to use to scan our pictures with. It's a very narrow range, so we'll click on that, and we will exit the viewer, and we will start our scan. Ah, it tells me, hey, 
you didn't put a spectrum database in here so you better pick something before I can start so what we're going to do is we're going to click the add button and here's our files here's all of our color databases so we're, there's our dark blue hat so let's select it click on open and there's our dark blue hat right there it shows it we can see that we've got it selected so now we will hit start it tells me that I've got some other pictures from another mission do I want to save them or is it okay to remove them we're gonna say our target is okay to clear we're gonna empty it click on yes and locate will begin processing up here at the top it tells you the time the mission started we have zero images so we're gonna to have to fix that that tells us that we are in the wrong subdirectory we didn't select the right folder so I'll go up here and I will click on the three dots where the images are supposed to be and we will do the Embry-Riddle search mission and we will select images there you go we'll select that folder and then now we should be able to press start it will clear it says mission started up here and the queue is filled with 149 images and it begins processing the images right here you see each one is being clicked through and it's going very rapidly so I can tell you that the images are going to take about three minutes to process those 149 images if you'll notice over here we've got zero hits so far so we're watching to see if that changes the, the progress meter is advancing and it gives you a percentage of process here there's our numbers counting up our current attempt is one because there is only one this is more of a automation information piece which we are not running automation we are only running one scan at a time current processes we're running three so we're going full blast with what we told locate to start with Move it along 70%. It just doesn't slow down. Still, we don't have any hits, though. This is a bit of a concern. And what that tells you is either there is absolutely no colors in there that are blue, and there's something to be said for that. However, it could be that our range is set so small that it could be missing blues one of the things that you must be aware of that is you get further away distance wise from a color it's going to fade it's going to change its hue and saturation the color that we used was taken very close up it was a selfie with a camera that was two feet away and it's going to be probably the most vibrant it can be because that's what we want is a faithful representation when we take a picture we want it to look right and sure enough 
we didn't get any hits at all. So what we need to do is we need to expand it a little bit. And I'm going to use this opportunity to show you a different way to, to work on that database. So again, we're going to go back to the viewer. And it doesn't show any images in here now because if you'll remember, we erased them. So, but this time, we're going to do things a little differently. We're going to go ahead and do a file, and we're going to do open, and we're going to go back to our Embry-Riddle search mission, and there's our hat guy right there. Let's go ahead and, and bring that one up again. But this time, if you'll notice over here in the upper left-hand corner, I'm going to select area. And this is a little different search method. So what we're going to do is zoom in again on the hat. We'll go ahead and get down just as close as we can. And notice we can, whoo, that's a big eye. We can move in down to the pixel level again. We want to get as close as we can. See, look at that. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to click and hold the right mouse key. And I'm going to block off nine of those squares. Let's go ahead and clear that. We'll do it again. We'll do nine squares right there. And what locate does is it gives us here an average value of those nine squares, which is going to be a better representation of what we see in nature. So let's go ahead and create a range using those nine squares. And we're going to call it uh, dark. We're just going to use the dark blue hat again. It's going to warn me that I'm about to overwrite it, and that's fine. We're going to say yes. Now, it's still showing it as the average of a single color, which is still a single color. What we want to do is we want to convert it to a range again. There's our range, but this time we're going to increase it by this value two more times. We'll just two more times as an example and go bump, bump, and you see how the start color and end color really opened up. If you'll notice over here, your thumbnail colors have really opened up. So let's try that and see if we get a hit that way. So we click on OK to save it. Close out the viewer, and now we're going to hit Start again. Boom, start it and 149 images are loaded in the queue and it begins processing those images. So if you'll notice it says found zero clusters in that image, that 401 JPG, there was zero there. So if you watch this you can kind of see what locate is doing and how many clusters are found and whether it's over the 500 mark and that sort of thing. So there's a lot of information to be had right here if you get used to watching that. So we'll let that run for a little bit, and we'll come back over here, and we'll wait and see if anything pops up and our, our image is saved. Now, I've, I've never, I run these things every single time using a different nine blocks. Of, and look, we've already got an image saved, right? So this is the cool thing about it. It's running. We're going to go ahead and click the viewer, and it opens, and there's our image. Up here in the upper right hand corner you'll see there are circles drawn around that area right there. So let's talk about the tools that are in the window itself. The most important one to us is going to be the zoom to object button. Now you can do this one of two ways. You can either click that button with your mouse or you can use your keyboard to hit the Z key. So we'll hit the Z key and boom, that zooms us right down to that pixel that was found by Locate. Well, that doesn't look like a hat to me. I don't think that's a hat. That looks like a car bumper. And again, it's a chrome bumper, and it is reflecting the color of the sky, which happens to be blue. So as I stated earlier, here's the human in the loop. You know that this is not the target that you're looking for. So we can archive that by pressing A on the keyboard or clicking this button right here. Before I press that A for archive, 
I want you to notice that down here in the lower left hand corner of the screen that we've already got located is chunking along and has already located 10 images that have the blue color range that we've selected. So I'm going to go ahead and click on A to get rid of this image because I know it's, it's not the one I'm looking for. So I click it again and it brings up the next consecutive picture. And it's out off in the field somewhere and that looks kind of interesting so let's hit Z again and there it is there's a something blue in that tree right there now just because it zoomed in right there doesn't mean that we can't zoom in further we can we can do that we can use the mouse wheel and continue to zoom in to get a closer look at that and if you'll notice, the little yellow crosses right there are the, the pixel clusters that match the one that we want. Now, if we wanted to look at that image in its original form, down here we have this button, View Original, or we can press the V key, which will make those yellow crosses go away in the circle. It will also make the yellow circle go away as well. But press V again, and it will bring them back. We can also, this is a very, very powerful feature. If we should have a, uh, an internet connection, we would be able to use Google Maps and click on Show Map. Now, excuse me while I rearrange my screen, but there is the Google Map of where that target is located and we can click on the satellite view and it'll show us the field. Incredible tool to be able to use and not only that we can go to the exact GPS coordinate. So it's a very powerful tool to be able to use to send to your searchers or your ground team. So that one looks pretty good, so we're going to flag it. So we'll say flag, and here we got another one. Let's zoom to that object and see what it looks like. Now that's a little different view, and that's one of the things that we like to stress is that you can use a little different view, and that's looking an awful lot like a hat to me, so I'm going to flag it as well. Now here's a kind of a... a, a an approach view from the other side of the tree and we'll zoom into it and oh yeah not only is it looking like the, the 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 hat but we also saw that the guy had a green jacket the green and gray jacket on and there we're, we're getting into something that looks an awful lot like that jacket as well so our confidence is pretty high that we're gonna we're gonna find this guy so we're gonna flag that one and and they just the hits keep coming uh, there it is again and we can zoom to it. Yep, yep, there's, a, there's another good hit. So we've got these hits. So we need to generate a report, and we need to get this out to our team. So let's go ahead and hit Generate Report. And, and this is a, a standard Adobe Acrobat PDF file that is very easily transportable, and you can send to just about anybody. Locate will give it an output report name. You can name it anything you want and we'll save it and it will then open up that PDF file right there and it will give you your match report for everyone that you have flagged it gives latitude and longitude for each one of the images notice they're slightly different for each one but that shows the offset of the of the drone it gives the US National Grid coordinates as well. And again, PDF file, you have hyperlinks, and it will also bring up a Google Map location when you send it to someone if they have an internet connection. Again, very powerful tool. So that concludes our online quick start guide. If you have any questions, please don't hesitate to send them to us, and we will get an answer back to you just as soon as possible. Thank you.